What is going on, YouTube fan? It's your boy Tony Two Times, and we back with another episode of the Baltimore Way, man. Y'all know what I need y'all to do. I need y'all to like, share the video, be sure to comment. Man, this story right here is real near and deep to my heart because this a family member. This my personal blood uncle. Everybody say I don't talk about my peoples, so I'm going to give y'all one. You feel me? Be respectful in the comments. Let's get right into it. So tonight we're going to talk about Melvin Hexall Jr., a.k.a. Man, a.k.a. Big Shaq. Melvin was born in Baltimore, Maryland, 1973, in Lafayette Projects, East Baltimore. Man was born to Lavinia Oakley, which is my grandmother, and he also had an older sister named Linnell Lonely, which is my mother, you feel me? Now, my father was around, but he had his own thing going on. Him and my grandmother weren't together anymore. You know, everybody did the best they could in the projects. We was deep standing the buildings. It was me, my mother, my cousins, my uncle, my grandmother, my great grandmother. But it was real close knit and we was family orientated. Just trying to make it, take it one day at a time, you know, but I don't want it more. He was at that age. He seen everything going on around him. This that era when the narcotics was just flooding the Baltimore streets, especially in the projects. So it was kind of like, as soon as you step out your front door, you right there in it. And it's kind of like being from the projects, you already had the cheat code. Cause as soon as you walk outside, you had so many people with it, you can just go holler at somebody. So Aunt did just that, he jumped off the porch. Aunt always had a good heart, he bought me stuff. He took care of my grandmother, he took care of his mother. You know, he took care of the household as a youngin. You know, Aunt was getting money out there, trying to stay out the way, but he was a hothead. He was a big dude, 6'6", 300-something pounds. That's how he got his nickname, Shaq. From as long as I can remember, he been going back and forth to prison. A lot of my life, he spent in prison. A lot of conversations we had was me talking to him through a jail phone. He tried to keep me out of trouble when I was going through my phase. He was locked up around about 2003. I had a daughter on the way. I was running the streets heavy, trying to figure it out, trying to make a name for myself. Now, I got jammed up. And then right when I got jammed up, Aunt came home. I did my three and a half years, came home, Aunt was locked up. When we finally was in the streets at the same time, we both was left with my great grandmother trying to help take care of her. She was the last one left at this time. This around about 2008. It was me, Uncle Man, her, and sometimes my cousin Shawnee would stay out there too. Now we both was working. I was trying to tell Aunt like, man, we gotta keep a job. We gotta take care of Granny. We gotta do what we gotta do. He tried, you know, he had a job. I had a job. I was making like $8 an hour. It's crazy because he was making more than me. You feel me? I was a little mad. I'm like, he don't even want to work. And I'm trying to work and he making more than me. We got a Sam's Club card. We was trying to do the family thing. Go shopping, pick food in the house, pay my grandmother bills. We got cable at the house. You know, my grandma was cool beans. She didn't care if we had company, females, whatever, as long as we ain't disrespect her. But Aunt just couldn't do it. So he went back around the way. At this time, as we all know, the project's gone. So now he hanging on Jefferson Street, Jefferson and Monfort, McEldry Park, all in that area. Now, one thing about the streets, it's a lot of fake love. Everybody you grew up with ain't your peoples. Everybody that, that you call your family ain't really solid, you know? And me and Aunt used to talk about this all the time. I had a lot of respect for him because he taught me a lot about just being yourself, if you're going to be in it, be in it. If you're going to be a working man, be a working man. Ain't no half stepping out here. Ain't no plan. It's real. Now, I don't want to swine at all. What I mean by that for you out of town is he ain't let nobody play with him. He was a big dude. A lot of dudes were scared of him. A lot of dudes ain't play with him. He'll put hands and feet on you real quick. But man, it's crazy these same blocks. I used to try to talk on, off of, you see what I'm saying? We used to have conversations, that's me and him right there. And I used to tell Aunt like, man, when I move to Atlanta, you come down there with me, we turn our life around, do our thing. I was already changed my life around by that time. It supposed to be him, 
my little cousin came with me. But I ended up coming by myself, just me and my wife. You feel me? Man, 2015, fast forward. I'm in Atlanta. I'm working. I'm grinding. I'm going back home. But I'm trying to find a way to stay in tune with everything, stay in tune with everybody. I got a call at work one day. Unk lost his life on Jefferson Street. Same street, same block. He hung on all the time. Same block we used to drink on. Same block, he said, cause nothing ever happened to him down there. That block loved him. You know, somebody ran down on him, hit him up. He ain't make it. That broke my heart, you feel me? Like I was dealing with that for a long time because the last conversation we had, my great grandmother had just passed away. And that's what made me want to leave the city. For y'all that want to know, I felt like I ain't had nothing left. Even though I was living on my own, me and my wife had a place together. That was my baby, you feel me? I had already lost my mother, my grandmother. So my great grandmother, you know, she had stepped into that mother role and she looked out for me. I know if I ever fell on my face, I can go back to her house, stuff like that, vice versa. Aunt could come there too. But man, Aunt just couldn't leave the streets alone, you know? And you feel me, the situation that they say happened, I ain't gonna speak too much on into it. But like I tell y'all all the time, I speak on these stories because I've been through a lot of this stuff. I thought about, you feel me, like, yeah. I thought about coming home, man, because I ain't like the way the story sounded, you know? But I had to put my pride to the side. I had to think about my family and what I had going on. And I had to think about how the streets work. I don't stay in and out of prison, man. I just wanted a better life for him. I want a better life for all my family, even my family that's still out here, still surviving still in these streets trying to figure it out. You feel me? I don't been on my mind and my heart a lot lately. That's what made me do this video. I miss him, you feel me? Like, that was my road dub. That was my homie, you feel me? He told me a lot and he always stayed reeling down with me. You know, and he lost his life to these streets. You know what I mean? I just wish he could have listened to me even though I was the nephew and he was the uncle and came down south with me. Maybe he could still be right here and we could be telling these stories together. But sometimes that's how the streets go. That's the Baltimore way. You feel me? Rest in peace, all my angels, all the people I got looking over me, man. You feel me? I got a lot on. Them. And for my people that's still living, I love y'all. We might not talk every day, but y'all know I'm on a mission. I'm trying to take care of everybody. That's the ultimate goal, man. This is another episode of the Baltimore way. This is the Melvin Hexall Jr. story. I love y'all fam. I'm out.